Today, I'm not only introducing you to a new aquarium, but I'm also gonna show you how I set it up, and then we are adding in a breeding group of cichlids. But before that, let's take a look at everybody else. <laughs> First and foremost, how am I able to set one of these tanks up so quickly? Obviously, we need to facilitate the nitrogen cycle first and foremost. Make sure these guys are going to be safe. I'm looking at this aquarium because it's an easy view of their biological media. They have a surplus of biological media that I can take from and add it to another aquarium, especially these sponges. These sponges are like gold to me. I could take one of these and rinse it off in a tank, get all that mum and detritus and jumpstart a cycle, and take some biological media that's already seeded with bacteria, toss it in the overhead sump that I already built, and we've already got a cycled aquarium. I can go ahead and add these fish directly to it. But what about quarantine? Well, obviously all fish have to be quarantined, regardless of your level of experience or what you've gone through in the past or where these fish came from, they need to be quarantined. And by quarantine, I mean they need to be put in an aquarium all on their own. If I add it to an aquarium and it does end up having something, I risk wiping out the whole tank. So when it came to the Auratus, I didn't need to put them in quarantine because they're getting an aquarium all to themselves. And that's exactly what we did. Now the design of this aquarium was quite simple. I knew I wanted a rock background and rock bottom, black sand. However, I also added in some wood just to give it some more contrast and more character. It also allows for more uh, breaks in line of sight. Uh, allowing for less aggression and more territories. However, I then thought, let's add in some Anubias, because you guys know me. I, I, I cannot help myself but to add Anubias to the tank. And at first, I kind of liked the idea of it, but as I slept on it, I thought it looked horrible and removed it. I think the tank looks absolutely phenomenal as is. Now let's jump back two weeks in time and add the fish into the tank. Ooh, these guys look good on camera. Yeah, I'm just really not sold on this Anubius at all. Um, the more I look at it, uh, to be fair, I just added it right before this video. 
So I was like, oh, let me just add in some plants. Somebody's gonna say this needs some plants. And I just don't think it does. I think it looks good without, but. So these just came from my local fish store an hour away. So I'm not worried about uh, any sort of intense acclimation process. You know, acclimated them to the temperature of the water. That's all I gotta do. And there they go. Yeah, this, this, uh, this tank is perfect for them. I love, um, I love the contrast of the wood or the fallen logs compared to the, uh, the gray rocks and then the black substrate. These guys are gonna love this. Let's get them settled in. Um, we got three more bags to go. The downside to getting a breeding group of adults is that they're already adults. We didn't get to experience them growing out and all that sort of fun stuff, but they are a breeding colony, so technically we will. We'll get to just be able to fast forward it all, watch them breed, go through the process, and then we get to see their fry, all their babies, um, immediately almost. So it's gonna be cool. Now 120 gallon for these guys is perfect. I'm gonna let them settle in and then we're gonna talk. Okay, so very next day with the Oratus Aquarium, and I gotta say, right off the bat, I cannot stand the look of the Anubias. I think that just because aquariums can sometimes look better with plants, I don't think every hardscape needs them. Sometimes it does technically take away from them. So this is the aquarium as of right now. Two weeks later, everybody is doing absolutely phenomenal. Although I've got two females chasing each other's tails in circles in the back there, which is, <laughs> is kind of interesting. Mind you, that both of those, besides the one in the front, both of those are holding uh, eggs in their mouths. This is a breeding group and we will see fry in this tank, but I've never seen them chase each other <laughs> relentlessly like that, like a dog chasing its own tail. It's absolutely, oh, and then we have a third one. Here we, it's like, it's like a tornado of a radis there. Um, we do have one de very dominant male, uh, and he seems to be one of the darker ones. I'm not sure if it's him. Uh, actually, I think it's this one here. Aren't they gorgeous as a dominant male? They're absolutely beautiful, absolutely phenomenal. Now, look at the males. We'll chase each other's tails. We only have five males in here, and the rest are females, a total of 18 fish. This is a very balanced, a very good uh, balanced colony. You definitely don't want to have one to one when it comes to African cichlids. A lot of the times you'll want three to one. So three females to a male. I would personally also appreciate if I could have that in my personal life, but society frowns on it. Jokes people, jokes. With that said, this tank is just absolutely gorgeous. At first I did not like it and it had everything to do with the Anubius. I think it looks absolutely gorgeous right now. Very unique very different. I'm loving the contrast of the gray rocks with the black sand, but even more so, I thought about using a different type of wood. These are just aqua decor wood, um, believe it or not, it's not real. Um, so it's not technically uh, adjusting the pH or hardness in this aquarium at all. Look at you, what are you doing? Why are you digging down there? I didn't like this tank at first. I thought the Anubius took away from it. And sometimes that's the case. Just because we want a little greenery doesn't mean it's going to look good in the end. I think this tank is incredibly fascinating and moving forward, it's going to be incredibly interesting to see what happens with the fry. Now, I know a lot of you will say, well, set up another tank and raise them. I'm going to see what happens at first. Um, and in my area, Aratus are technically not a cheap fish. They, they run about um, 30 to 40 bucks a piece. So it'd be silly of me not to try to, uh, to raise them and whatnot, but I'm all about uh, finding out what actually happens under different scenarios. You guys know that I'm doing the Shell Dweller experiment where I take a look at these guys and how they're going to interact in a tank all on their own. And if you take a quick look, we can already see these guys are breeding. They do have fry in this aquarium, but you'll notice they act tremendously different. For example, um, without the reflections, but you can see uh, Shell Dwellers everywhere, all throughout this aquarium, acting incredibly different than they do in the Lake Tanganyika Aquarium, which is far more natural and suited for their uh, requirements and needs. There's only one difference. These guys spend far more time hugging their shells, and it's for an obvious reason. They have a tremendous amount of predators in their aquariums. Although, you'll notice that this is the line. The Frontosa are not allowed to cross the line. The real bosses and the real bullies in this aquarium, believe it or not, are smaller than your pinky finger. 
So the Aratus Aquarium, in my opinion, was a success and I absolutely love it. We'll check that one off to another aquarium Joey absolutely loves. And I gotta break these aquariums down and do uh, you know, in-depth updates for you guys here shortly at some point. Obviously, I can't just show you like little two-second clips. I know some of you get upset, but I just kind of wanted to show you that everybody's doing okay. Everybody's doing absolutely phenomenal, and I am living for this gallery right now, and I know a lot of you guys are. But if you cannot wait to see updates or, you know, see things, uh, wait to see things or anything like that, um, and you don't want to see the filtered version of me, join my... <laughs> The members of my channel called it OnlyFins. Just go ahead and check it out if you're interested in it. It's like four bucks um, or three bucks, whatever it is. Uh, and you'll get all of that <laughs> access to it. And by the sounds of things, uh, I clearly listen to what they want from me, including naming it something that I probably shouldn't. But it is my now my OnlyFins. And if you want to join, link is in the description. I'll see you guys in the next video.